Hello everyone! A new day, a new video vlog. The very first vlog was actually, I'm not saying that it was a big success, but it seemed that you guys pretty much liked it. So as I promised, I make new ones. The equipment is the same, so the video quality and the audio quality won't change. As you can see, I'm here with my little friends. I went, uh, went to the garden. We have like a communal garden here and uh, got some flowers, some dandelion and some chamomile. And I'm trying to get them to eat it. But as you can see, they are not really comfortable with the new situation, but they will settle down. So I'm having a lot of time now. And uh, what I'm doing? Well, probably you guys do the same, watching a lot of YouTube content, right? And uh, obviously, since I'm uh, a reptile keeper, I'm watching a lot of uh, reptile related videos. And uh, there is a very popular topic on the internet, which is what is the best pet reptile for you? There are a lot of channels, I'm not going to name them. They are like trying to make videos and they are trying to rate the, the animals so you guys will get a get an idea what you should get or what not. If you watch my content you see that I'm making these comparisons as well. I'm, I think I have like two videos where I'm rating my animals. If you watch my videos you know that these ratings are actually ratings that I give to compare to animals. Not just give a rating like in general. So for example hardiness or availability or upfront cost, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. I have a different approach and uh, this is what I want to share with you guys. So how you should actually decide which species is the best for you. It's not an easy thing to do but I think it's much easier than those videos make it look like. Well, first of all, there are a couple of things that you should take under consideration. For example, what kind of interaction you would like to do with your animals? What, what level you expect? I mean, for example, with these guys, you will be able to interact with, uh, with tortoises, but you will never get a level of interaction like you get, for example, with a dog. Or if you are talking about reptiles, with an iguana or with a tagu. Still, these, these animals can be the best pet reptiles for you. But I don't think tortoises are the best for me because I just really really love interacting with my reptiles. I really like a responsive behavior from my animals. If you're okay with, uh, with actually just watching the animals, you have a lot of options. You can have dart frogs, you can have uh, tortoises, turtles and there are a lot of options really. But if you want to go further and you want to actually touch your animal, you want to have some sort of a responsive behavior, you really need to just step a bit further and uh, maybe you need to search which best for you among, for example, monitor species. If someone would ask me which reptile species is the best, I would ask first, what can you offer to your animal? Because that's important. If you are not providing the baseline conditions for an animal, that animal won't thrive. That animal won't feel good. And if an animal doesn't feel good, it won't be responsive. It won't provide the level of interaction you're expecting. So all what I'm saying is you really need to be prepared with those things that the animals require for their well-being. You need to take under consideration the following factors. How big of an enclosure you need for that animal. Do you have enough money to feed that animal? For example, my savanna monitors eat so much insects that it's unbelievable. I don't know how expensive insects are in your country, but here it's really, really taxing to keep two savanna monitors. It's like 120, 150 adult roaches every single day or well, maybe I can just keep one or two days to just uh, ease their stomach, but they really devour a lot of, uh, a lot of food. So that's, that's really something that you take under consideration. Or um, 
the electricity bill for example. There are species that require a lot of heat, a lot of UVB. You really need to decide if you are able to provide those conditions, you are able to pay that much on electricity. Are you prepared to spend a lot of time with your animals? Obviously reptiles don't really require that much time from your end if you set up their enclosure properly. If you are having a large body lizard, for example a tegu or for example uh, a savanna monitor, you really have to spend a lot of time to make them bond with you. I mean, nobody wants a one meter or a one and a half meter long lizard that actually is ferocious and always just wants to bite your hand off. You really need to take a lot of things under consideration. You can't really just say that, well, this is the best pet reptile for you because it has low upfront cost or, or uh, well, for example, there's a leopard gecko. It doesn't require a lot of space. It doesn't uh, require special care, it's easy to keep, easy to breed, it's, uh, it's cheap. But for example for me, leopard geckos is something that I like to watch, but I'm not really handling those animals because even though some of my leopard geckos let me to handle them, but some just really don't like it. Leopard gecko is something that it's not hard to keep, it's not taxing, but you just can't really expect much from the species. Well, you can't expect really much from a leopard gecko. You can expect much more from an animal like this. This is the Aki monitor. This species is something that I really, really enjoy to keep. It's a very inquisitive animal, a very friendly animal. I really like to keep animals that are inquisitive, that are responsive, and these guys are really that. Well, they are not really afraid if raised well. If you're not pushing yourself on them when they are young, they get really chilled and, uh, and basically I can't say any bad about them. These guys eat a lot of insects. If you feed them chicken for example, if you feed them stuff with uh, high fat content, they get obese, so you really need to provide them insects. If you can't provide them insects because of various reasons, for example, they are too expensive for you or your mother doesn't allow insects in the flat, maybe it's not the best reptile pet for you because you, you won't be able to care properly for them. Even though in some country they are expensive, here in Hungary they are not very expensive, they are small, they don't require much space, they are living in this enclosure behind me. So it would be pretty convenient for you to buy one, but if you can't provide the means, you can't provide the food, it's not the best pet reptile for you. You have to be honest with yourself and you have to actually ask yourself if you can provide what the animal needs. If the animal gives you what you need, just write down the needs and demands and ask yourself what you can provide. And if you get the result that you can deliver everything that the species needs, and the species can deliver everything that you need, then yes, it's the best pet reptile for you. It can happen that, for example, for someone, a tegui is the best pet reptile, which, which is not really a best pet reptile, for example, for a six years old. This is really starting to get to be to something like poor man's clean reptiles, but uh, this is not my intention. This is an Argentine black and white tegui. Is this the best pet reptile for you? Probably not. Probably not for everyone. Why? Because the species has a lot of demands. The species needs a lot of space. The species needs a lot of food. This species can be really, really aggressive. I'm not saying that, well, it's a, it's a controversial um, subject and I really don't uh, like to go into this discussion because there are people on the internet who really like to contradict someone who actually states something, but all what I can say is these guys can get to be nasty, especially the boys. When they hit puberty, they can just turn from a puppy dog into a devil. So is this the best pet reptile for you? Maybe if you want something big. If you want something strong, if you want something uh, characteristic, yeah, this is a really good choice. But 
you have to go and read about what the species needs. The conclusion is simple. Check what your animal needs, ask yourself what you want, and just check if all the things just meet in the middle. There are huge differences between individuals. So maybe this tegu is something that now it seems to be really appealing to buy and now you just go to the store, you buy a tegu and it turns out to be a nightmare, a living nightmare. Don't fall into the trap of the videos surfacing on the internet that tells you which or which is not the best pet reptile for you. You are the one that actually can decide which is good or which is not good for you. But first of all, have the knowledge. If you have the knowledge, you can decide. If you have the knowledge, you will make a good decision. But if you are not reading, or you don't read, you don't get your information, you will never make a good decision. If you don't make a good decision and you rush into something, you can have a relationship which is not really healthy or beneficial for, for either of you. Not for you, not for your animal. It's just like a relationship in life. See you at the next video.